Celebration of the World Cup finals in Uganda went up in flames on July 11, when twin explosions in the capital city of Kampala claimed 74 lives and left the nation in a state of shock. Somali terrorist cell Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attacks, bringing fresh attention to the warrior nation of Somalia. Somalia's chaos did not start today. It started 20 years ago, since 1990-1991, when the then military government of Somalia, of Mohammed Siad Barre, was overthrown by factions who were in deep, from different regions and in different areas of Somalia. Unfortunately, they never united. The civil war has claimed countless lives, displaced millions of citizens, and created anarchy in the Horn of Africa. Now, with the violence migrating past Somali borders into other African regions, officials say it is all the more reason to find solutions for Somalia's ongoing conflict. The international community weighed in last May. World leaders gathered in Istanbul for a conference hosted by the United Nations and the Turkish government for the sole purpose of finding answers. Ambassador Diwali of Somalia says those answers were once at their fingertips. There was a period of U.S. and U.N. intervention in the 92, 93, until 95. Unfortunately, they didn't stay long enough to create peace and stability. According to a CIA report, the two-year-long humanitarian effort to alleviate hunger in southern Somalia ended in 1995. Having suffered significant casualties, peacekeeping officials left before order was restored. With the nation gridlocked in conflict, UN officials say it is unwise to return. Peacekeeping operations are set up under certain conditions that are defined by member states, namely the Security Council. In the case of Somalia, the argument that immediately comes to fore is that there is no peace to keep. You know, South Central Somalia is a country at war. It's a different kind of challenge that requires a different kind of response. The alternative response world leaders agreed during a conference in Turkey is raising more support for the transitional federal government, which was instituted in 2004. The young government located in the nation's capital of Mogadishu is faced with a monumental task of brokering peace with warring factions within Somalia. Ambassador Diwali insists that the transitional federal government still needs the support of the United Nations peacekeeping operations. You see, the mandate the mandate of the UN uh, peacekeeping forces normally is to bring peace and stability. Yeah. But the, the fact they left before stabilizing the situation, of course, brought this deterioration. The only uh, relief was 5,000 African troops, uh, and they are from Uganda and Burundi. According to the United Nations, there are in fact 6,120 African Union soldiers and these are the only troops available. Um, in preparation for the decision of the Security Council, our colleagues from the Department of Peacekeeping Operations sent letters to 60 member states. As you know, the UN doesn't have a force, we don't have um, our own troops. Through the Department of Peacekeeping Operations, we approached 60, around 60 member states requesting, you know, should the Security Council decide to deploy a peacekeeping operation in Somalia, would those countries be, you know, available to, produce, to, to, to provide troops? Of these 60 member states, only 10 responded, and all of them said no. With no troops available to work as peacekeepers in Somalia right now, all the United Nations can offer is support. We're doing all we can to support AMISOM by way of building infrastructure, by way of assisting in training, by way of assisting in all sorts of manners at the request of the African Union. That's what the UN is doing now. Beyond our engagement in the political process, which is, you know, uh, a prerequisite for that to be peace. But even this support is slow in reaching Somalia, making the fight for peace an uneven battle. When people have no salary, and to, 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 to survive on, how can they get go and fight? Fight people who have all the assistance 
from politically and religious motivations. And they get all the equipment, they got the supplies, they got to get the arms, they get to get the money. So how can you overcome this when you have only few, uh, maybe about 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 maximum uh, army, armed forces who are not regularly paid even. But UN rules and regulation make the spends and finances a slow process. There has been a very strong call um, by Asadis Jewel Abdallah for, for us to review the way in which we implement our rules and regulations in the particular case of Somalia. Um, that has not happened yet. So all of these things really make it extremely difficult to do the work that needs to be done um, at the speed that the situation requires. All the international community can do is to help Somalis resolve their problem. Uh, but nobody can replace the Somalis in that responsibility. You know, nobody will resolve the problem in Somalia if the Somalis themselves don't do so. We may help, uh, we may, uh, you know, um, delay, but, but all we can do is, is, uh, is, is to assist, is a secondary role. The primary responsibility rests with the Somalis in their totality. For many Somalis, the only answer is to leave their homes. The UN Refugee Agency reports that thousands more will seek refuge this year, tax on the already overcrowded and under-resourced camps in neighboring countries. For the UNA's Interdependent, I am Chika Moses.